Hey everyone, welcome to a Tuesday news day of anniversary edition, but not really, because we are not going to talk about the anniversary, right, Sinzar? Yes, this is, well, I guess the whole month is anniversary, technically speaking. Right, but I mean, this event itself has nothing to do with the actual anniversary. Or, well, that's actually not quite true, right? There is this special thing. Um, yeah, like, I think on the JP server, this was, like, near one of their anniversaries. I don't okay. remember, I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But so we have a banner, we have a Mog King, and we also have this new GL exclusive thing that I guess is connected to the anniversary or at least to the previous banner, right? Yeah, the the red eyes dragon thing. Um, it's it seems to be like a second week of the Clash boss because it has the same the same races and everything as the Clash boss. So I guess same weaknesses. Okay, interesting, interesting. Well, let's let's jump into the banner. So I recognize a unit a lot of people have been talking about, and as usual, per my dumb self, I have no idea why people have been talking about it. So I'm talking about Dark Fina Warrior's Prayer. Now, what is the Warrior's Prayer um, suffix? Yeah, in JP, it was the uh, Ashura's Journey, I believe, or Ashura's Pilgrimage, something like that. Oh. Global... I guess changed it to Warrior's Prayer, so whatever. So this is kind of like a whole series of units, kind of like we had the whole return event. We have like, you know, Nicole return, Secure return. Right, Reagan but this, return, does this come so. with an event of its own or some type, like, or, or a story yeah, event yeah. or something? Yeah, this, uh, no story event. Actually, was there a story event, JP? Because th this event is multiple parts. There is very likely going to be part two next week with more units of the same, like, storyline. Right. Um. Yeah, there. Okay, yeah. So there, there was no, there was no actual story event in JP, but um, yeah. So it's it's Fina and Rain this week, and then we should be getting Poppy and Leftia probably next week if we follow the JP format. So unit design seems very cool. It seems to be some type of traditional Asian, like I want to say Japanese or Chinese. I don't know enough about the culture to say I'm sorry. Uh, but it's better that I say I, I don't know than, than uh, say something that's obviously wrong. But it kind of feels Japanese, right? Yeah, she looks cool. Um, you know, it's like it's the dark fiend with like the kimono and all. So, yeah, she's pretty cool looking. And a spectral snake whip-ish, right? So, okay. Mm -hmm. So, Cesar, why have I been hearing about this unit? Oh, wait, actually, wait, wait, wait. First, before we get into the units, you actually get one of these units guaranteed in the step up. That's interesting. Oh, don't, don't even get me started. I think I think that is the biggest troll move Gumi has done this entire anniversary. I Wait, think why? So why? Bad. It's a random chance of which one, and one of these units is a dumpster fire. But but like, I mean, so you, you still have, have a, the normal pity, right? I I think so. Because the tickets drop. Like I mean, there are tickets in every step. There is normal tickets that you usually get to buy the unit. So I'm assuming you can buy the unit, right? Yeah. Yes, but on every banner beforehand, they have shown you how to spend those tickets. They don't show that on this banner. So, can you really get from pit? Like, okay, so we're very obviously you can use them for one of the units. So, rain absolutely you can pity. But if I'm if I'm if I am overlooking it, someone pointed out. But I don't see anywhere on here where it says exchange 10 tickets or exchange 20 tickets well actually it does say copy. to perform a nv guaranteed ex summon where Wait, do you see that um so if you just go below the uh pictures of the materia and the shards and mr crystal and crown below okay. there you see like use 10 one out of 10 nv summon tickets per perform one nv guaranteed ex summon Oh but, no, that's the that's the, the 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 regular red tickets we get all the time right but we get these weird red tickets from this as well have they always looked like this with like the, just yeah, the nv text yeah. on them okay they have okay yeah but yeah. then i'm assuming i mean what, what else would you be using them for they, they have to be oh, well for rain for rain no Maybe. no I, but i mean can you like are you sure no that, that, oh. that that's not the problem the, the the news doesn't say and it's like why for the first time ever have they taken this out of the news it's very suspicious Interesting. It, it very, yeah. it is interesting. Uh, cause it does say envy, but, but okay. Okay. But it does say, and an envy exchange ticket. And it does say dark Fina rain warriors prayer. So the envy tick exchange ticket is called envy exchange ticket, dark Fina slash rain. So I am assuming this is still a normal pity oh. as usual. 
Okay, so people in the chat are linking. Okay, so it's in a different news segment. It's in a different. It's in actually in the yeah. exchange shop news, which I basically never read. Okay. Because... So 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 listeners, you know, this is a normal, uh, normal pity, but with the added six step. So the six step is new, right? That that's the whole thing, and the six step is a five k summon, and you get one guaranteed banner unit, but it's random which unit it is, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, pers- I personally, I personally don't like this. Maybe players love it. I, I, I think, I think this is terrible because, like, if you go to the end of a step up, and then rain pops out of that crystal, I would be so pissed off, and I would feel terrible if rain popped out of a crystal after going through the end of a step up. I would be so mad. But that I'm would gonna... just make me feel bad, and that is not a good thing. You don't want to make your player feel bad when they're playing your game. Yeah, but... I would feel so pissed off. If rain popped out on the end of that step up. It's going to be super interesting to hear why you think that rain is so bad. But, I mean, to me, it's like this. Not even I am stupid enough to go to step six unless I am planning on doing a full pity. Besides, you don't even have to do step six in order to go full pity. You can just stop at, like, you can stop at step five and then just do the normal, um step up the other one the one that's one three five and then free in order to get the pity so you don't even have to spend your 5k on on one of the guaranteed if you don't want to um, i guess technically, technically speaking but the the step up the first one is actually two laps and you can't even do the second lap unless you go all the way in the first one yeah yeah true so like if you really want to do the two laps then you're gonna have to but the question is it would probably like if you're just going for pity it'd probably be worth just doing one of the laps and then just doing the rest on the normal NV premium step up, which where you can do eight laps. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I don't know. I mean, like, okay, so I have an issue with this because there's like, as you're saying, there's an obvious troll unit on this banner. And when there's an obvious troll unit, then this is a very dangerous step because, you know, you don't want to cry. You don't want to accidentally pull the shit unit uh, after spending, holy shit, this is a lot of lapis to even get to step six. Exactly. So just to clarify, if we had this exact same format on, for example, Sylvian Wilk, um, not Sylvian Wilk, yeah, Sylvian Wilk, where one's premium, one's not, and it's a 50-50, but they're both good units, I'd be fine with it. Yeah, exactly. I'd be fine with it. But yeah, like I would have loved if this was, yeah, yeah, no, but but this would have been great, like, if they are, I would love this format for, like, nostalgia banners, like, uh, Final Fantasy mainline games banners. I, I'm like a comparison to me would be like the Final Fantasy VIII banner where there was Kiros and Ward and Laguna, right? And regardless of which one of them that pops out of that crystal, you'd still be happy. Uh, I mean, provided you're pulling Final Fantasy VIII to begin with, like I am, but like, you know, that, that's what I mean. Like you should be happy with whatever pops out. So tell me a bit about Dark Fina then. Why, why do people, why has she kind of been hyped up? Is there anything special with her? She is basically a carbon copy of Fina the Return from about two months ago, uh, where she's a 40, except for, you know, the swaps of elements and all that. So she's the dark version. She's okay. a 45, 45% dark amp um, for the party. She's got the 400% stat buff, 300% LB buffs. These are all on her SLB, so you can't even do this until the SLB is charged up. Um, she does a 30% whip in peril. And she does the 30% dark field with the Ashura Esper. And she's got um, human killer, demon killer, and fairy killer for the party. And that's basically it. So nice unit, but whips are hard to come by. Like, what do we have? We have like Coral SDMR and... Well, her, she, 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 she brings the whip you want. Her, her STMR is like the best magic double hand weapon in the game, kind of. Um, oh, with, with the disclaimer that I was thinking it is of physical whip. units, but yeah, 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 this is a fantastic STMR. Mm-hmm. It's it's really good, and that is that is probably the big reason people want to pull Fina is for the STMR more than like the unit itself is, is still good, but the STMR is 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 where it's at. So this is very interesting. So with this STMR and the GL exclusive Mage card, you're transforming a dual wield Mage into a TDH Mage with just two items. Because this whip has 200% TDH, and then the card has 200%, right? That's actually pretty nice. 
the card? The, wait, no, the, the card. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you mean the, the, the card from last week? Yeah, yeah sorry. Weeks, yeah, the, the, the Step On Me Fina uh, card. Yes. 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 If, if you have that card plus this whip, you're capped on everyone, even, even, even if they start out at zero. That is that is pretty beautiful, actually. That is that is very nice. Um, and, and of course, bringing that strong whip in peril is nice as well. But otherwise, her kit is the same. So literally, that's her only role. Yes, pretty much. Um, yeah, you know, with the exception of, you know, killers and element and all swapped. Yeah, she uh, she's just a buffer. That's it. So I'm going to be honest, if I had to choose between the two Finas, I'd definitely go for this one because this one has such a such a much cooler sprite. Although, of course, elements are what they are. So I guess like you want the return Fina if you have Cog and you want this Fina if you have... Who, who the fuck is doing dark damage? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to justify pulling for JP premium units because it feels yeah. like JP premium units just get crept immediately. Like we pulled for Dark Rain and Dark Rain got massive global buffs and it feels like Dark Rain was crept the day he came out, even with his buffs, because no one uses Dark Rain for anything. And then we pulled for like Knights of Grand Shout, and he got a massive global buff, and he got his like one week of Dark Visions. And it feels like Knights of Grand Shout is already old news. Like, yeah. are we really going to use him in the next the next Dark Visions? Probably not, because he's not Thunder or Lightning, and we're going to be sticking with those hundred percent Sylvie amps that Knights of Grand Shout kind of forces you to have. Yeah. So, like, crept immediately. And then, but I, yeah, I was I ranting know. about this, though. Like, I, I'm not sure what Gumi is doing here is healthy for the game. And, and hear me out. I'm not saying, like, they shouldn't have made Sylvie. Uh, I'm saying that the power level they choose to make GLEX units with is just so vastly beyond what the JP meta is bringing that, as you say, like, some of these units, why would you, like, why would you pull on this banner? Is there any reason to pull on this banner al at all Unless you're like whip. a huge Fina fan. For the whip. The whip. The whip is it's very good. It's very slot efficient. And um, whip in peril is a problem. Um, you know, obviously, if you're using Fina herself, that's fine. But in Dark Vision, not Dark Vision, in Clash of Wills, uh, you got Kaito. So Kaito can give you that 25 whip in peril. And you can make like a really nice double hand Roberta or a nice double hand, um, which, what's your girl's name? Tiana or yeah. Yigni yeah. or all kind of mages. Actually, Tiana already has max double hand anyway, so she'd rather like a different weapon. But you get the idea. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I mean, the STMR is great, but but she's a premium unit, right? Oh, Ib Ibarra, as they're saying in the chat, Ibarra, oh, Ibarra would, yeah, would, yeah. Would, would would love this whip in Clash of Wills. For sure, for sure, she would actually. But my my kind of I, I don't know my, my issue with this is that they're kind of creating this unhealthy balance where they're slowly conditioning the players to do just what you're saying, which is you know save for the GLEX. Why would you need anything else? They just released a unit that has hundred percent amp to two elements that's AOE, and we know that like there are units coming <laughs> or or being upgraded in JP that are gonna do the same, but for single target, this is so much more stronger. Like why would you ever bring anything else, right? So. I, I don't know. I, I feel like they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot. There, there's honestly no reason to make GLEX units that much stronger. It could have been reasonable strength. Like, I mean, everyone would still be bringing Sylvie to all of their teams if Sylvie had 60% amps to two elements, right? Or am I wrong? No, it's true. Like, I'm... See, my philosophy is a little bit different. Like, you're saying don't make the global units so good. I would prefer... Fix the JP units to be not so terrible. <laughs> well, I mean, I fully agree with you. You know, if that was a choice, I would agree with you 100%. I just know that they don't have the time to do that, right? So I'm thinking like, okay, if you don't have the time to do that, what's the smart move? And the smart move is not to create like units like Sylvie because they're going to be too strong and creep terribly hard. Um, but okay, I mean, I guess like you won't be super sad if you pull this off banner anyway. Again, fantastic SDMR. And you might actually have need for a dark amp, dark field support that also has a whip in peril at some point. Yeah, like, like she's still a good unit. For example, on a dark visions boss that's weak to dark, um, she's still going to be the premium pick, like the, the, the number one pick over, over any global units. Like the only other unit that even does a 45% dark amp is EX3 Kryla and it's single target. So like she's still by far the best dark support 
on global currently. So. Yeah, but isn't that a very slim ask though? Like you're saying on the element locked stages, those are the first two stages that are usually very easily capable anyway or the first yeah. two of the last stages. And like, you know, why the fuck would you bring Dark Fina to the last stage if you have Sylvie? Exactly. Yeah, for the last stage, like Dark Fina is no. But yeah, um bringing anything uh, other than Sylvie is just a huge mistake. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, it's it's funny, but it's also true. I mean, it's just true. Oh, it, that, it that's is. just it, how it is. It's, it's completely like, yeah, that, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, because we now have 100% amps, like every single final boss team in Dark Phases that are going for the higher ranks, of course, uh, are going to be built, completely built, 100% taken into account the, the 100% amplifies. And anyone that is splitting that amp is a handicap. So, yeah, we're, we're going pure non-elementals that are either innately thunder or or lightning or non-elemental yeah. for final bosses. So I'm wondering, you know, I'm I'm wondering when they're going to break their own, you know, cuz obviously Sylvie is built in a way where they're going to copy paste and make more units, right? Like that, that that's that's or at least that's to me pretty obvious. I don't know how you feel about it. It's it's very likely because they, they, they did the same thing before with like, you know, there was Ling, then we had Bulwark, then we had well Roberta kind of, but Roberta is like that plus Yeah, much well more. I, I'm going to say Roberta and Kaido are more similar to each other than like b- because I feel like Ling and Bulwark were their own type of unit. And then we have Kaido and Roberta that are kind of the DPS and killer buffer unit with mm-hmm. their own niches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. So I'm hoping like, you know, I'm hoping that we're going to get more tools because right now as a person that has tried really hard to get a Sylvie, I, I am not at, I'm not at pity yet, but I have spent like 30, 40 K Lapis or something. I don't remember. No, 30 K Lapis. Um, Still no Sylvie, so I'm feeling a bit left out. <laughs> left out of the meta, kind of, for not having Sylvie. Um, but, yeah, you know, m- maybe I'll shitter her off banner. Anyway, Darkfina, good unit. She's getting a global upgrade. Should we talk about that? She's getting two abilities that are upgraded. Uh, one of them is the uh, Demon Killer. It's her killers. Yeah, it's her killers. Her, her killers are different abilities. One of them is the EX in JP, EX3 only. Global moves them down to EX2. So that's the demon killer. And then her human and fairy killer is um, also getting upgraded. So I would I would I would say probably 200 percent because Wilk is doing 200 percent AoE already and you know everywhere, Dark Faces included. So two hundred seems likely, oh, I guess. Yep, yep. Sounds sounds reasonable enough, sure. So okay, you're not gonna be sad if you pull this unit, but um, Again, if you have Sylvie, there is very little value outside of the STMR. Um, and if you have if you have someone like Fryevia, you already have a good TDH weapon. Sure, it doesn't have 200% TDH. That's really strong. I'm not going to downplay that. But kind of, you know, pulling for this unit solely for the STMR feels like a reach in the state the GL is right now. Mm. I, plan to, I plan to use tickets on the banner and hope for good luck. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. I don't know. I, all my tickets are going towards fucking Sylvie because I need that <laughs> unit. Uh, okay. All right, so let's talk about Rain then. You already told us that Rain sucks. Um, so why? What does he do? Oh he seems God. to be a dark damage dealer. He's got His chaining abilities are 60x modifier. 60! Right, okay. That yeah. is like, that is pre Neovision's era tier of chaining. 60x modifier. That's bef- that's worse than the original cloud. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. And he's got a dark locked SLB for 300x that does slightly more versus beast. And Wait, that's his 300x. That's it. Wow. That's that's not good. So again, another another obvious troll unit, uh, which Extremely is troll. very much a shame. I'm gonna say. I I was you know I I don't know. Again, I am not a a, a gacha financial person. I've never worked in, in in a gacha company, so I can't say. But there are so many games out there that don't do split banners. It's less work, and it's for the company. It's more satisfying for the players, and especially players don't have to feel like they're being treated like shit when a obvious troll unit pops out that you have literally no use for. Like, does he at least have a good STMR? Yes, that, that, that is his one redeeming factor is he does have a nice TMR and STMR. So that is something to slightly make you feel better about getting trolled by him. All right, so the TMR is a okay attack, high HP uh, clothing item, uh, chest clothes, and uh, has killers on it. So 
that, that's pretty nice. Although the attack is only 52, so you're probably not using this for your attackers. However, the 100% HP and 3,000 3, health is really nice. In fact, for this cow, maybe it would have been using this on, on some units like <clears throat> Sky. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what I said in a previous video about this. Is um, Yeah, Sky would probably like this on like a Dangerous Clash, like the current one. But um, most of the time, you'd rather go up like Sephiroth's coat or Reagan's chest or Clash gear, etc. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm already using one guy STMR on my on my Sky. I would love to use this chest as well, honestly. Like this, this, this would have given her the extra oomph to survive um, unlucky turns. Because of course, the problem with Sky is if she dies, you lose all stacks of her fucking LB. So you know, yep. restarting that and shit all over again. And speaking of guys, STMR, compare that to Rain's STMR. It is just a pure upgrade. It is. So Rain's STMR is actually ridiculously bulky. It is 7,500 flat HP, all right? And 100% HP. Um, that is really, really strong. It also has 70 attacks, so it's not a bad, it's not a bad gear item for attackers to begin with. Like... What beats this? I mean, Tifa, right? Um, the the ring from Cow. Anything else? Uh, orange jug as well. Yeah. Okay. So so not much. This is a top tier attack item still, right? Like that. That's that's yeah. kind of the point. While giving insane bulk to your units. For sure. This is very, this is a very very nice item. And again, the, the, this this is the only reason you wouldn't break down into the tiers. When rain pops out of a crystal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you, this is the consolation prize. You do get a really good TMR and STMR that you can gear uh, units with, especially attacker units, to actually survive some of these more tricky uh, trials. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, but but I guess not more more like he has no party support or anything like that. He's he's just a pure damage dealer with an underwhelming uh, SLB. <laughs> he's got a one hundred percent beast killer buff for the party on a cooldown. Oh, that's worse than the original Envy Rain. Nice. It is. It is. It's like, Alim was going absolute, how can we troll our players as hard <laughs> as possible with this unit? And here it is. Yeah. I mean, this is this is really not a good unit. <laughs> like, in the meta, not even close. Um, I guess, like, you you know, if you're a brand new player and you pull this, it's a decent unit. But... No. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, because, like, there are literally like over half of the envy pool is better than this unit, right? Like kind of. So, so it's still like it's the, the one of the worst picks you could get. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, the only people that are gonna be you know using this STMR in in a good way are gonna be veterans anyway, because they are the ones that are gonna be gearing their units for more bulk with with, with cows like these, for instance. Um. So okay, mm -hmm. okay, all right, all right. But but it is it is what it is. So do we do? Should we say something about Fina's card? Uh, is it any good? Nope, nope. This card be... is terrible. This is a premium card that is just straight up worse than the bad versions of the Dragon Quest cards we got. Like you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about the good one that was with like uh, what's the two main ones, Dai and and Baran. I'm talking about like the second tier Dragon Quest card is still better than this premium card because it gave. 1500 stats or HP and 100 to all stats and some passive stats. This gives half those stats because it's missing attack and defense. It gives no passive stats. It gives some mana regen. Who gives a damn about mana regen? Yeah. And some resistances. And then it has an ability that is exclusive to Fina. Why was this ability not put on Fina's kit herself? If they wanted to lock it to EX3, because EX3 is required for the card, that's fine. Make it an EX3 ability that she can only use then. Putting it on the card and only allowing her to use it is so incredibly pointless and stupid. Yeah, it's a waste like, of a card ability slot, honestly. Like, this is so weird. The card could have had a nice quirky... I actually didn't even see that. I, I didn't see the requirement. I just saw fill LB gauge for one allies. I was thinking, okay, so this is kind of like a version of Mont's STMR, right? Like, you can give it to a unit that's a support unit, and they could fill LB for an ally. But no, <laughs> this is actually exclusive to Fina. So, um, yeah, it makes it a bit yeah, worthless. No. Now, don't get me wrong. That ability is great. It's a, it's a three-turn cooldown, so very, very easily used offense. It's a 60 LB fill. That's great. Oh, wow. That's actually but pretty powerful, for sure. It's for Fina only. So that's not like a card ability. That's a Fina ability. The card itself is trash because it's a premium card. 
Yeah. That 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 passive should have one thousand percent been in Fina's kit, and that should have had five hundred flat spirit and magic. It'd still be a bad card because it only has a hundred base. It'd still be a bad card, but, but at least it'd be, be useful, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of cards, actually, I think we should mention Rain's card because Rain's card is is not that bad. Um, oh my god! Yes, it is. Well, it's Compa- kind of like a, isn't it the light version of Tyvus? But he's not no. a premium. Compare this card to, to to Kaito's card, a non-premium card. Kaito's card. Kaito's well, card I mean, yes, Kaito's a, card is straight up better. But I mean, in every possible way, in you might only way. have one Kaito. And so <laughs> what what I'm talking about is, so the card is pretty weak uh, meta wise because it only has 110 base attack, but uh, the level 10 ability is 300 attack on any FFB unit. So not even gender locked. So, so, so it's not bad. Um, I mean, there are definitely worse cards out there, sure. but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you. Of course, Kaido's is better. Um, you know, Esther's is better. Um, Cog, uh, Tyvus, mm-hmm. these are better, but all the units I mentioned are premium except, uh, yeah, Kaido. You, you can't really, you can't really compare it to a premium. That's not, that's not really fair comparing it to a premium, but you yeah. can compare it to like Kaido's card, Freevia's card. And like the oh, I forgot Freyavia's card. Actually, that's also really good. Yeah, the yeah. Dragon Quest cards were not premium, so like Laura Cross card was not premium. So there's so many non-premium cards that are just better than this one. Ah, uh, well, Laura Croft has no flat attack though, right? Okay, true. It, yeah, that, that forgot forgot that was locked to her own. Yeah, You're yeah. right. Okay, that's true. Um, but but no, I, I mean, I, I'm just you know, I'm just trying to make it sound less bad. Like I, I'm I'm pretty sure you'd still want to put this unit to ex one to have a copy of this card in case you might need it, and you might like gearing your fourth damage dealer. You might not have an op card for that. Um, t- t- like take taking it. Like my example is kind of I I don't have cog card I don't have the DQ uh, card I don't have so I I I have like Tyvus Kaito and Fraevia for my FFB units so if I would need to gear a fourth DPS I'd use this pretty much I guess yeah. I guess I mean it's kind of a saving grace like the unit there there are some some interesting uh, uh, things for this card all right so um the event <clears throat> for this banner is a standard mugging right pretty much yeah. And no super specific gear to care about. Uh, there is a 22% boost EXP obtained from battle uh, accessory. Um, so there's that. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand the point of that. Like, is 22% <laughs> some kind of, like, culture thing with Ashura? I don't, I don't understand. Because it has to be, because it has 22 attack and then has 22%. So maybe someone in chat knows, but, uh, yeah. I guess. It, it, it's probably just a, a nice, or it's probably some type of um, just... Homage, like you're not using this, obviously. Um, okay, and then oh, 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 they duh, it's it's for 2022 New Year's because this this, this, oh. this was the, the the New Year's event in JP. Okay, oh, that makes that's sense. why. Okay, okay, then it makes sense. Yeah, it's still shit. I mean, that doesn't change the fact <laughs> that it's actually horrible. But uh, but you know, it, at least we know why. Yeah, oh. yeah. All right, uh, and then we have this new. Probably GL exclusive um, fight, right? A mal- malefic red eyes dark dragon. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure this was not in JP. I definitely don't remember it. Um, yeah, so I think it's a global exclusive fight. Also, it is basically a copy of the, the uh, Thranator that we're currently fighting in Clash of Wills because it's a, it's a demon dragon that's weak to lightning, wind, and earth. So it's it's like the boss version of the Clash of Wills boss, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna assume here that this is going to be a quite a weak boss and not a highly difficult quest because looking at the rewards, you know, it, it's quite crappy rewards, right? Oh, they're saying in the chat it's the final boss from the Wilk story event. Yeah, I didn't even know that because the Wilk story event, I literally had my Tyvus with his blink on, like just killing everything. Yeah. Can I just say how beautiful that item is? <laughs> like if we're talking about <laughs> it, oh my god, I love it. Tyvus's blink on. Like the best thing is you you start a fight and, and you see this text, I'm crazy strong, you know, and then just everything <laughs> dies. Oh, it makes farming so much easier. I love that. More of those, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, same here. Uh, I I also killed it with Tyvus. I I heard there was a bug involved with it, like it, it wouldn't let you actually fight the boss or something. Yeah, um, there there is a, it, it still is bug is not actually fixed yet. 
Um, apparently, if you bring someone with an auto cover ability, so like General Celeste or Ronda, et cetera, it'll actually bug the fight. So oh. don't bring don't bring anyone with auto cover and you'll be fine. Okay. Or you just bring a single Typhus <laughs> with, yeah. with his uh, uh, accessory and he'll just destroy everything. That's my new item world farmer as well. Oh my God. This, it's like the best thing ever in the game. Like, I love it. Uh, okay, so so it's so it's that boss. We're getting some extra rewards for it. So th- so there's a 300 lapis in it for us, an NVEX ticket that nobody fucking cares about, uh, because let's face it, it's another Rack Star, and and yeah, some EX coins mm-hmm. and uh, some super trust mogul uh, tickets. By the way, I saw fucking Sinzar, Sinzar. Mm-hmm. I saw yeah. a fucking screenshot in Discord. You had five thousand four hundred STMR tickets. And I have spent some in the past. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Can I just ask? Like, holy shit! I don't. I I don't use. I've said it a thousand times. My philosophy is: you only use rare resources if you specifically have to use them to beat a boss. And that's when I do it. Like on my stream this week, when I streamed the Clash of Wills, I had like four hundred something unit of choice tickets. I don't use them on the Clash of Wills boss. I hit a brick wall. I needed one more copy of Blizzard Orb. I UOC for it. That's when I use that kind of stuff. So if I get to a boss, I'm like, I gotta have another copy of like Kurosame's STMR. I'll go grab an STMR mogul. But if I don't need it, I'm not gonna use it. Yeah, but but here's my point. I, I fully understand uh, your your point, and, and that's true for me with other resources like you know Mr. Crystals and so on. But like, you can't call. STMR tickets rare anymore. Like I use them on fucking everything. Like like literally like if I get an Envy unit that I don't have the STMR of, I Moogle it. I have like five Tifa STMRs. Like I use it for everything. Okay, sure. I have maybe a bit more than other players because I always buy the um the adventure pack and that has that has both extra Moogles and tickets. Um, but like I think I still have like 15 100% Moogles. And I'm using it everywhere. So it's like, it's not rare anymore. Yeah. Wait, you don't like, wait, wait, wait. You don't have a, so, so Bless is saying, uh, don't call them rare. I don't have one. You, you don't have a single Moogle? He might have, he might have used them all. Not a single STMR Moogle. What? Okay. That's crazy though. Cause yeah, like, I, 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 I will say though, um, I do usually grab the adventurer quest, the adventurer crest each yeah. month which comes with STMR moguls. And I, I, I do use those. For example, when, when I pulled Freavia, I moguled two extra copies of her STMR. When I pulled Wilk this month, I, I moguled two extra copies of Desmond. So I do use them, but because I'm getting a steady income of moguls from the Adventurer Crest, I don't really need to dip into the ticket stash to get even more. No, but that's true. I mean, I mean those those moguls, like those moguls are usually what I use as well. Um, and again, I'm just moogling very freely. Like I have three Kaito STMRs, I wish I had more Fryavias, but I don't. I only pulled one Fryavia so far. Um, but yeah, so it's weird. Five thousand. Like I- I'm sorry. I'm just gonna have to call you out on this. Five thousand four hundred tickets is weird. <laughs> like you should just convert them. To, I mean, at least convert them. To, oh, actually, no. Don't convert them to Moogles because they will just eat up space in your. No, yeah. don't, absolutely not. Because for the first like three years, everyone's like, "Well, just go use them." And because I waited, they gained value. Because three years later, they added the. 90 tickets for a Moogle, so they, they gained value. They became more That is true. More, that is yeah. true. I, so, I, I used them even before, so I've probably, you know, I, I would have probably had like five more <laughs> STMR Moogles or something uh, given, or, or probably more than that, but yeah. Okay, okay, all right. So listen, I, I had one last question to ask, if you have some time more uh, before yeah, we move on. Fine. Yeah, it's about this cow. So uh, I know you've been experimenting a lot. Uh, you've been talking about it on Discord um, about um, different team comps to be able to cap this cow. Mm-hmm. And it's notoriously difficult. So uh, like, what's your conclusion? What do you need, absolutely need, to cap this cow? I would say Sylvie. Sylvie is the absolute shining star MVP. I think I, I'm, I know for a fact it can be capped without Sylvie um, because, yeah, uh, I, I did a cap without without Wilk. I did the cap without Chow, without that kind of stuff. You know, people ask me to do all kind of do all kind of you know don't use don't use the brand new premium. Don't use like Chow. Chow is a big one. People say don't use. Um, and that was fine. I, I did I did that. I've got like multiple rank one cap videos. Uh, the the other big request I'm getting is do a cap without Sylvie 
and without Esther, as in neither one of them in the party. Right. I spent my whole afternoon Sunday going in there, trying so many different versions. I spent like two hours theory crafting on paper, trying to math it out. Could I could not figure out a way to do it. The best I could come up with is a team that with near perfect variants could do it. But that would require like a one in 40 roll or something to get yeah, everyone God to roll tier luck. And, and given the fact that this is not a trivial uh, cow, you know, it's going to eat some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I basically gave it. Now, that being said, if I brought Esther without Sylvie, it's still reasonably doable. Yeah. So Esther plus Wilk can still mostly carry it even without Sylvie because they're just so strong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Sylvie is the biggest enabler of this. And it's really, really only because of the Amplify. That 100% Amplify is such a bit... So the, but the resistances are nice too, right? Like she has 200% lightning resistance, making things a bit easier to gear for. Sure, stuff, right? that's, that's fine. But actually that wasn't really a problem because if you, if you use Chow and I gear Chow for 195 lightning resist, that way he takes basically no damage. But he also does take damage, so he does counter. That was fine. That 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 that, that was a very easy problem to solve. Okay. Um, but the amplify. So to 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 do it in perspective, um, let's say you deal. Uh, let's say you're dealing 1.9 billion damage with a 45 percent amplify. Well, let me do the math real quick. I mean, it's 30 percent more, unless you have yeah, a few, so, but you don't. Yeah, yeah, here it is. So so if, if you're dealing on approximately 1.9 billion damage, which is like around ish where I was doing with a with a 45% amplifier, going to a hundred percent amp, you're now dealing 2.7 billion. Yeah. So just the amplify and nothing else added eight hundred million damage and pushed us way over the cap. Yeah. So that amp that amplify is just game changer. Game changing. Well, it's not just the amplify, it's also that she kind of also she has the imbue and the imperil and so on. So it's kind of making it easier for you um to do these like one of the things people are struggling with is actually bringing a relevant element support unit. Like there is there is bulwark. That's usually everyone anyone that doesn't have Sylvie is using bulwark. Um but like aside from bulwark, who the fuck are you going to bring? Noppy? Yeah, the uh, that, 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 that's a, that's another problem I had because um yeah, so there's three elements on the boss. You've got uh, wind, earth, and lightning. Oh, what's your other one? Lightning, lightning. So for lightning support, you've got um, Ramu Sakura, who can't be even in peril, and she's basically a dead slot other than uh, other than bringing the lightning amp. That's not worth it. Well, she does have I'll a field though, so that helps out a little bit actually. Um, it does. Even even it though does. her amp is only forty five percent, so yeah. Yeah, I also tried out with um, with Roberta's amp. Roberta does have a 45% amp, but can't imbue. So I geared the whole party in lightning weapons. I used Nalu's STMR on Sky. I used Secura's STMR on Roberta. I used um, I used Nalu's STMR on Kaito, which did nerf his damage because he's not using his own katana. But I, you, had, you had to do it, though. You have, to have, you have to have thunder. Right. And I tried that. Damage was still too low. And then, so, like, earth damage, you've got, like, Roka. And again, basically a dead slot, so no. And then for wind, you've got Bulwark. Now, Bulwark is useful because he has a 60% wind amplify, which is very good. And that that was the highest damage I could I could manage is a team with Bulwark, 60% amp, um, but it still wasn't enough. It still yeah. was not enough to, to get 2.5 without, without Esther. Yeah, slot efficiency is kind of like if you can remove one of these slots, so... What I was running is, for instance, a tank, Bulwark, and Kresnik. So I don't have Chow. So I could have optimized one slot if I had Chow, but I didn't. So I had to bring Kresnik, and I had to have a tank. Um, but bringing another DPS is super important. So I feel like, yeah, and it needs to be a very powerful DPS too. So it's it's it, it, it's a very tricky puzzle to to solve. Um, and I one thing that kind of is interesting here is that we do have other units that do support. So like we do have Noppy, for instance, but. Her kit is so outdated now. I really hope they maybe do something with her. Maybe she can get one of those materia or, or something yeah. that improves her. Because like she could be an interesting earth um not supporter. Not really, because Nappy does 30% amplify for the party, but the problem is Nappy's damage may as well be non-existent. So you'd get more from Roka just for just for a bigger amplify on the real deep. That's though. actually a good point. Yeah, Nappy doesn't really have the damage anymore either. So uh, that's that's I guess the thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, unfortunate, unfortunate. It's really like like it's it's really shitty elements, honestly, that that uh, that make this really difficult. Like if you imagine it was Earth, lightning, and let's say ice, that would at least make it easier because Fravia would be less of a dead slot than Bulwark is. Um, stuff like that would make it maybe a bit easier. Or if it was fire, then you could at least bring Louise. Um, I don't know. Or Roberta. Roberta. Roberta could do or fire. Roberta, without- obviously. <laughs> yeah. If it was fire, then Roberta would crush it. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, it's the it's the combination of elements that's making it really awkward. Like, or if it was water, you could at least use Kaido. You know, like there would be one slot less that's dead, and that would give players a bit more flexibility. But honestly, like, I mean, this is just kind of a circle jerk on how good Sylvie is. And how of a, much of a must pick she's going to be also for Last Ages and DV. Well, I mean, she's going to be the must pick for Last Ages and DV until they release another unit like her, right? And then you kind of can choose which one you want to bring. Yeah, completely honest here. I expected them to buff Dark Fina's SLB to maybe not 100% amp, but a whole lot better than 45, and they didn't, so... Yeah, <laughs> I mean, but, but that's what I mean. Like, it's so weird. Uh, th- the JP units are already crept as they come. Like, is can it be profitable for Gumi to have terrible weeks? Like, this is like, let's face it. Who the fuck is going to pull this week? Nobody. Nobody's fucking going to pull this week. So is it profitable for them to have bad weeks because they're creeping their own units? Like, I don't get it. I mean, sure. Like, yeah, whales for the STMR. Fine. But that's, that's yeah. like not the amount they normally get on a banner that's actually good. I mean, like, I, I, I totally get the way you say, like, to redesign a kit, like for Rain, to redesign Rain into a reasonable unit would take a lot of manpower. Absolutely. That would take time. That would take effort. That would take designer work. Okay, sure. So they're not they're not going to like redesign these JP units. Right. That being said, it takes about 45 seconds to alter a modifier on a kit. If they didn't want to redesign his kit, just like boost his LB mod to be relevant. That's all it takes. That is all yeah. it takes. Like, even Knight to Grand Shell's 450x modifier is too low at this point. So, Rain's 300x modifier is garbage. So, boost it to 600 something. He still <laughs> won't. He still, he still wouldn't be. You're laughing. Angela's, Angela's got 765 or something. Yeah. What, what, no, what no, it's a good it? point. No, no, no. I mean, I hear what you're saying. And yes, I agree. Like, okay, there's not a lot of effort involved in just buffing some numbers. Like, for instance, Dark Fina, they just released Sylvie. They could have at least given her 80 AOE Dark Amp. Like, a alternative to Sylvie if you don't have her or, or whatever. Um, it's like just like a, a single number change takes no time you're not coding you're not redesigning you're not making new animations all this stuff it probably takes one guy on his lunch break to change a number that's so easy to do and it they is don't it do is it. i mean i agree they, they do so much work around a banner that just you know like adding that number isn't a big deal especially if they do it in a safe way so you know like as you said like okay they're upgrading it but so I would probably not go as crazy as, as you just said. Like, I wouldn't give him 600. But I probably, you know, at least 400 or something. Just make it, okay, this is actually a good unit. Like, 400, you might bring this unit. Um, and that's, that's you know, that's easy to do without being afraid that Riser is going to break the meta. Like, you're not doing something crazy. You're just buffing the, the mod of one single unit. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But instead, we get him as is, and anyone that pulls him is going to bench him immediately after using a Moogle on him. Oh, speaking of which, by the way, Sinzar, did you ever try using Terra in this uh, cow? Like, would that make sense in any way at all with her uh, field for lightning? I mean, you're giving up an entire unit slot for someone that does literally absolutely nothing except a 40% field, which which is a, a good ability, but like that's a whole party slot, and you still have to have kind of two tanks or at the very least a tank plus a really good buffer for your survival you still need your breaker which is like usually kaito but yeah it's it's like the the party slots are the problem so like my my best non-sylvie team was wilk sky kaito and then you need some kind of elemental buffer so that was bulwark and then i needed survival so that oh you also need morale so you have to have morale. So that was Chow. Yeah, and then Chow. You have to have, and then you have to have mitigation for the party. So that was Runda. So like, they're, they're, like so Terra just so who's Terra replacing? Yeah, Kaito? exactly. 
Yeah, guy. no, of course not. No, no, it's a good point. It's a good point. It's really hard to replace. And those 40%, even though they are big, they might not make up for the unit you're removing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's no yeah. room. Yeah, we just need a, to buff Terra again. I just feel it. <laughs> like, is it, is she getting at least any buffs? Like, there was a recent Final Fantasy VI banner in JP. Did that buff uh, any old units? Oh my god, I could go. I could go on for an, an, another hour ranting about the Final Fantasy VI event on JP. They oh. have crashed the JP. Even the biggest white knights of the JP server in JP chat are shitting on this event in JP. It is the worst event they have done in years. They have Wow. They overhauled the way Mog Kings work and it is the worst change oh, to the game. Oh, it's it's working ever. like a raid now, right? Oh, it's way more than that. It's it's horrible. It's so bad. It is so bad everyone hates it. Everyone universally hates this change in JP. Oh, wow. So now nice something to look forward to, I guess. This it's is so going to be it's going to be an interesting GL episode when when and or if this change uh, comes to uh, GL, right? It's so bad. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've exhausted the content for this week, really. Uh, I can't believe that so many people are still in chat just listening to this bullshit, but hey. Long episode. <laughs> it's a long episode. Thanks to everyone that did listen, though. And thank you, Sinzar, for, you know, again, enlightening my stupidity with your uh, superior intellect. <laughs> Glad to join. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye later.